We live in a world where we'd like to think that everything is going to turn out all right. But one of the messages of the Buddha's awakening was the world has its ups and downs. And the human world doesn't seem to be going any place in particular. We can't guarantee that the people in charge really have our best interests at heart. So we have to have our own best interests at heart. We have to depend on ourselves. We look outside, there's not much you can depend on. The problem is we look inside our minds and also we have a feeling sometimes that there's not much we can depend on either. The difference is that you really can create a solid refuge inside. The refuge outside, the refuge in the Buddha, the Dharma, the Sangha, is the refuge of an example, the refuge of information being passed on. If you want to find true happiness in your hearts, as the Buddha and the members of the Noble Sangha found true happiness in their hearts, this is what you have to do. There are the duties of the Four Noble Truths, and the duties of right effort. If something bad has come into the mind, you try to get rid of it, and then you try to prevent it from coming up. As for good things, if they're not there yet, you try to give rise to them, and if they are there, then you try to develop them further. An important aspect of that is wanting to do it. So on the one hand, you think about the bad things that can happen if you don't develop skills in the mind. But then you also think about the good things that can happen when you do develop good skills. And you rejoice in the fact that you have this agency, you do have this power in you. That's something we should constantly reflect on, that we're not just the victims of fate. We're not living in a big cosmic machine. We're living in a system of cause and effect that's a lot more malleable, where we can make a way, in our minds at least, to find true happiness. And so when you judge, when you judge your actions, we're not judging them for a final verdict. We're judging them as a work in progress. We're heading in the right direction. We're trying to head in the right direction. And is this action leading us there, or is it leading us away? And if it's leading us away, well, how, what can we do to turn around? If it's leading us in the right direction, okay, what can we do to make that determination firm? This is the work of right effort. Learning how to want to do the practice. Even on days when you feel tired, when you feel ill at ease, when you feel kind of discouraged, what can you do to step out of those moods and put yourself on the right track? It is possible. Every thought world that we create has its blank spots where we can slip out. It's like a hologram. A hologram may give us an image of something, something else further away, but it always has some empty spots, make you realize oh, this is not the real thing. In the same way your mind's worlds that it creates have their empty spots, so try to find them. And the main way of finding them is to remind yourself, okay, this is a creation. Is it a good creation? If it's not, well, I don't have to continue participating here. I can let it fall away as I, whereas I find something new and better. That's part of the power that we have. So learn how to rejoice in the power you have. We come with a lot of responsibility, but it's better than being powerless. If you're powerless, you're at the mercy of forces that you don't really know at all. You hope they may be good, but you look around. And if there was a divine being, as a comedian once said, maybe he's, maybe he's not bad, but he's an underachiever. But we don't have to depend on divine beings. We can learn how to depend on ourselves. And therein lies our hope. <laughs>